This is part 4 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss retrieving data from SQL Server using ASP.NET Web API and Entity Framework. So here is what we want to do. We are going to have the SQL Server database table and when we issue this URI localhost for slash API for slash employees. We want to retrieve all these employees from the SQL Server employees table and return them as you can see here. In case if we ask for a specific employee, notice in the URI right here we have employee ID as well. So in this case we want to return that specific employee details as you can see here. Let's see how to achieve this using SQL Server, Entity Framework and ASP.NET Web API. So let's flip to Visual Studio. The first thing that we want to do is create our Web API project. So I'm going to click on File, New, Project. And then let's select Web and ASP.NET Web Application. Let's name our project Employee Service. And let's click OK. Now we want to create a Web API project. So on this screen, I'm going to select Web API and now let's click OK which is going to take a few seconds to create the Web API project for us. The project is now successfully created. The next thing that we want to do is create an employees table within our SQL Server database. So let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. Here we have the script which creates the database with name employee DB. Within this database we are creating our employees table and then finally we have the script which is going to populate employees table with test data. I have already executed the script. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. We're going to add another project to our solution employee service. This is going to be a class library project which is going to contain our ADO.NET entity data model which retrieves data for us from the SQL Server database table. So let's right click on the solution, add new project and the type of project that we want to add is a class library project. Let's name this employee data access. Let's click OK. This is going to add the class library project to our solution. We don't need this class 1.cs which is auto generated. So I'm going to delete that from our project. And to this employee data access project, I'm going to add ADO.NET entity data model. It's present under data, so let's select data and then ADO.NET entity data model. Let's name this data model employee data model. Let's click add. Now we want to generate our entities from the database. So I'm going to select this first option, Entity Framework Designer from database, and then let's click next. We want to create a new connection. So I'm going to click this button, new connection. And now here we need to specify our server name. We want to connect to our local server. So we can either specify dot or local within parenthesis like this. And we are going to use Windows authentication to connect to SQL Server. And from this drop down, we are going to select our database. In our case, the database is employee DB. And let's click this button to test the connection. So test connection succeeded. Let's click OK. And Entity Framework is going to save a connection string with this name employee DB entities within app.config file within our employee data access class library project. So let's click next now. And it's asking us whether we want to use Entity Framework 5 or 6. Let's use Entity Framework 6 and let's click next. And this is going to connect to SQL Server, retrieve all tables, views, and stored procedures. We only have got one table within our database. Let's select that table, employees. And the model namespace is going to be employee DB model. Let's leave that with the default. And let's click finish. So this is going to take a few seconds to generate the entity data model for us. The entity data model is now successfully created. Notice within our employee data access project, we have a configuration file app.config within which we have a connection string with name employee DB entities that points to our database which contains the employees table. We want to use this employee data access project within our web API project. 
So let's right click on the references folder, add reference. We want to add a project reference. So let's select the projects tab within which we have our employee data access project. Let's select that and click OK. Notice it has added a reference to our employee data access project. The next thing that we want to do is add a controller to our web API project. So let's right click on the controllers folder and select add controller. Notice here we have templates for both adding MVC and web API controllers. I'm going to select this template web API to controller empty which is going to create an empty controller for us and then we'll add the required methods on an as needed basis. Now it's asking for a name for the controller. Let's call this employees controller. Now all it's going to do is create an empty controller for us that is a class with name employees controller that derives from the base API controller class. Now the namespace for our employee data access project is employee data access. So let's use that namespace here. And within our employees controller class, let's have get method which responds to the get HTTP verb. This method is going to return I enumerable of employee objects. So where is this employee object coming from? We have not created that. This is the generated entity by the ADO.NET Entity Framework. So ADO.NET Entity Framework has generated this entity based on this employees table, which has got these columns. So if you look at this entity right here, so when we right click on that and select go to definition, notice we have properties that correspond to these columns in this employees table. So we want to return an I enumerable of employee objects from our method. So the name of the method is going to be get, which is going to respond to the HTTP get verb. Now we have to create an instance of our DB context class. So within our employee data access project, let's expand the EDMX file here. And then notice here, we have employee data model dot context dot CS. So within this file, we have employee DB entities class, which inherits from DB context class. So this is the class that manages connections to the database, retrieves the entities for us. So let's create an instance of this class. So let's go to our employees controller class. And here let's use uh, using statement. So using employee DB entities, let's call this entities equals new employee DB entities. So let's use the entities object and this has got the employees object. You know, this is basically a collection property which is going to return us the list of all employees. And on this, let's call to list which is going to convert that to a list of employees. Now this is going to respond to the HTTP get verb without an ID parameter. Now when we request for a specific employee, we want to return just that employee. So let's have another get method which is going to respond to the URI which has got an ID in it. So let's pass ID parameter to it. And we don't want to return the entire employees list. We just want to return one employee. So first of all, let's change the return type to employee. And from the collection, we want first or default. And then here we are going to use a Lambda expression employee such that employee.id equals the ID that we are passing to this method. All right, so let's go ahead and build our solution. The build is succeeded, as you can see in the status bar right here. Let's run our project by pressing Control F5. We are on the start page here. Now let's navigate to forward slash API forward slash employees. 
Notice we are getting an error message. The error message says no connection string named employee DB entities could be found in the application config file. Now if you look at the app.config file, notice we have a connection string with name employee DB entities. So why is it complaining about that then? That's because Entity Framework is looking for a connection string with this name in web.config file. And if you look at the web.config file, notice in this file we don't have a connection string with name employee DB entities and that's the reason why we're getting this message. So to fix this, all we have to do is make a copy of this connection string within our web.config file. So let's copy and paste that in the connection strings section of our web.config file. Let's save it and let's reissue this request. Notice now we get all the employees from the database table as expected. Now if we request for a specific employee, we get that specific employee. In our next video, we'll discuss a concept called content negotiation in ASP.NET Web API. Thank you for listening and have a great day.